no jumper subreddit actually no jumper sorry somebody in the joe rogan subreddit actually shared this clip that I downloaded and put onto flipping streamable um regarding what it's like to go to flipping kill tony at the comedy mothership and it looks like a bit of a horror show i'm not gonna lie as much as i love the comedy mothership and what joe's done over there to go to kill tony sounds like an absolute nightmare to be in a room full of that many desperate comedians sounds like something that i definitely wouldn't want to go to unless i was trying to perform like as a punter i can't understand why you'd go as a customer to be honest but hey let's check out this clip that this guy uploaded guys and gals this is my first hand account of the new kill tony experience at joe rogan's new comedy club the mothership as you can see here i got some great video of the place it was uh, South by Southwest, and I had gotten distracted by all the new happenings. So give me a break, okay? Basically, from the beginning, no one knew what was happening. I had uh, gotten there around 5.15 uh, after dealing with this uh, South by uh, parking situation, and there were already about five or six comedians ready to sign up that were standing in front of the Iron Skillet side of uh, the comedy club there. While standing there, I saw a parish of nuns touring South by Southwest, or there's a uh, downtown Abbey, perhaps? I don't know. Either way, uh, closer to 6 p.m., someone came out and moved us from the Iron Skillet uh, onto the street uh, just in front of the club there, uh, which makes no sense because future shows, you're going to have cars there. You're going to have traffic there, so I don't know what they're thinking. But uh, we were standing uh, in a straight line for about 10 minutes, and then uh, as that line built up, uh, somebody else came out and uh, told us to uh, loop it around. So now it's forming this giant J going up back into uh, across the street. Jesus I don't know Christ. why. Maybe Joe Rogan. So many dudes. So many dudes. Fucking hell. It's definitely a men's industry, isn't it? It's definitely for the man's bloody hell, mate. So many Caucasian men. Rogan was flying in a helicopter and we needed to signal the to the gods that uh, the Kill Tony loyalists were ready for his arrival. Time came for us all to uh, sign new waivers and uh, Christy comes out and says, this giant J isn't going to work. Everybody get back in a straight line. So she moves the whole line back uh, against the... Uh, the Christy. Who the fuck is Christy? Why has he got the... Why is he be? Why is he on first name basis with people who work at the fucking comedy store that hasn't been open even fucking a couple of months christy you know who the fuck is christy sidewalk still in the street mind you but back in a straight line which still makes more sense than the giant loop around which took up most of that side of the street but everybody stayed pretty cordial towards each other at this point anyways the night was still young though this is where they put all the ticket holders nice and comfy low anxiety atmosphere fuck you know the kind hell. you want just before you sit down for a comedy show Joe Rogan said there's 1,000 flipping stand-up comedians in the world who are like murderers. There's, there's at least over a 500 of them just there. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Like, what do they think is going to happen? <laughs> what the fuck? There's so many of them. Like, what do they think is going to happen? Do they all think they're the next Bill Burr or something? Fucking hell. There's so many people. Holy shit. Oh, really get you in the laugh mood. Now we make it back to the alley. Of course, of course, of course. Everyone's got a little kook. This guy looks like he's covered in hair all over the place. People are encouraging him to take off his shirt. Of course, it's just like the, this is, imagine, this is like being in a line full of loaves of wannabe Burt Kreischers. Imagine that. Burt Kreischers by the dozen by the hundreds all queuing up desperate to get a little bit of fame and you're standing with them trying to make friends trying to make ha ha -e -e's. this is where they're going to hold us for the rest of the night as you can see the beers come out and the shirts come up oh. what do you what do you mean I love why Justin. are you here no well you don't count he's mexican nobody likes you <laughs> do you really think nobody likes me they can't they can't about you as soon as you're actually they talk you right to your face like what what, what, what did they say leonardo uh, uh, there's always a is she giving pick me vibes or she's just a girl that likes to just hang out with dudes and talk shit what, what are you guys saying i feel like there's always i feel like this this type of lady exists in all comedy clubs around the country around the world there's always this one girl that exists that's like this <laughs> The one that's got brothers. She might have played football in school. Maybe she played soccer. Maybe she played like like <laughs> who is this? 
<laughs> Whitney Cummings is her North Star. Eliza Schlesinger is her fucking idol, right? She unironically likes Amy Schumer's comedy. That kind of shit, right? She's the kind of person that, um, you know, is, is a reply guy to fucking Dave Portnoy. Those type of people. She kind of seems like that. But oh my God, man. <laughs> Trying to be a stand-up comedian is brutal if you got to hang out with these type of people. I'll take it back now. I don't, I don't blame Brendan for cheating, for only performing in front of TFAT K fans and not going down the open mic route because you must meet some absolute insane people insane people like day to day like men and women legitimately people that are like got screw loose they say you look like a pedophile who couldn't get any kids and you look like a single woman who has two kids at home oh (laughs) (laughs) hey how are the kids at home they're not gonna turn out to be like you whoa little insults are throwing back and forth this guy uh, just doesn't stop taking off his shirt in it i blown i blown i Blame fucking Bert Kreischer. This white man just won't stop taking off his fucking shirt. Bert Kreischer, school of comedy, mate. Look at that. Look at look what he's birthed. Bert Kreischer. He's he's one little marketing hack. He's now birthed. The, the people saying for she people saying she because she's a baddie. No, she isn't. This is a thing in that comedy scene because you don't see normal looking women in that scene. Anyone that kind of looks semi normal is a fucking baddie. She's probably. I'm assuming in that scene she probably must look like Angina Jolie she's just like a regular lady but that's the thing man like the comedy goggles is insane too so if you're a de- maybe in comedy if you're a decent looking woman and you actually want some attention going into the comedy scene might be quite beneficial because you're going to get a lot of guys that are going to get into you and stuff and want to be around you because you're just one of the only few women around there number one um yeah, I don't know. I can't. I can't imagine hanging out with these people. I think it's all in good fun for now. The night's still young. The sun is still out. Let them have a few more beers. Let the sun go down. The show doesn't even start till eight thirty. Uh, everybody's here waking early, pre gaming, having a good time. Now that it's getting dark and everyone has a few beers in them, this is when they decide to move everyone out of the alley and into the currently closed street. Once again, next week, this street will be flowing with traffic, but currently, South by Southwest has it closed. But hey, let's give it up for these two off-duty police officers who made sure the VIPs arriving in the alley were safe from all 300 of us. That's real police work, isn't it? Real police work is standing in an alley telling mediocre comics to stand here, stand there, pick up your bottle, put that over there, stop shouting, move here fucking hell mate all those years in the police academy so you can be a fucking crowd marshal (laughs) can you imagine how fucking awful you must feel driving home after your shift that's real police work right managing a crowd of fucking losers comics hey guys look it's william montgomery i don't think the cops knew who he was so he's explaining why would the cop know who the fuck that guy is these guys, man. Do you think they were shouting his name at the end? William! William! Oh, cringe, bruh. He's William Montgomery. And that he's on the show. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you, Mr. Montgomery. Now, this VIP van shows up, and they're trying to tell him to move out of the way, but uh, he's like, no, move forward. Okay. And he's like, yeah. Bitch, I'm David Lucas. Get the fuck out of my way. The club manager finally shows up, pops out like the boss he is, and gives us alley rats a quick peace out before he ducks into his club. So now we all stand oh, around the back. Was that Joe? Joe pulls up in that. Was that? That's a pres. What's that car called? It's a presidential car, right? Is that an Escalade? What's that called? They have them always in like fucking um spy thrillers and shit and stuff to do with presidents dying or like being assassinated. I don't know these cars. They always give them to flipping. Is it an Escalade? Is it a, what is it? A shit Chevrolet? What is this called? It's a tiny, that's what I'm about to say. Joe is fucking miniature. He has a driver as well. Now we know he's a driver. Escalade, yeah, he doesn't drive himself all the time there. Then the club manager finally shows up, pops out like the boss he is, and gives up. <laughs> Look how small he is. He's fucking tiny, isn't it? Us, Alex. <laughs> 
Good old Joe. Look at him. Look at little pocket rocket. Hey rats, a quick peace out before he ducks into his club. So now we all stand around the back door waiting for the show to start. Unknowing if it actually has or has not, there's no sound. There's How long have they been queuing outside? Wow. They must be. That's why Kill Tony is such a mess now. And I understand when you watch Kill Tony live, when it used to be live, anyway, when you watch it anyway after the fact, didn't you notice, especially when pe- some people go in and they smash it and they're really good, but a lot of people go on there and they get, you know, basically blinded by the lights and they get stage fright or they just, they sound so slurry. Now I get it. They're all smashed. They're waiting around to get a time to for it to open before they even get their names pulled. While they're in the crowd, they're probably drinking. They're probably getting high and shit. By the time they go on stage, they are no fit state to do any comedy, let alone comedy in a minute. They've been outside for ages. No indication. It's just us in the alley. And uh, hoping we hear a name so we can so pass it down the alley people. like a bad game white of alley telephone. Everywhere. So the show has started and a few oh, names man, have been no. called. And uh, the names get passed from the front of the line back to the back of the line. And it's already happened where one name started out as something and ended up as something totally different by the time it got to the back of the, back of the line. That somebody else went in, has someone else, did a set, and uh, got a secret show uh, because they went in as somebody else's name because it was all confusion. And they really thought their name got called. So uh, it started to uh, uh, heat up the uh, the atmosphere a little bit. And uh, words started getting uh, exchanged, and uh, pushes became shoves. Really? These niggas are fighting each other, right? <laughs> it, if there's anything more redacted than going to this thing in the first place, is going there and getting into a fight with somebody. Getting into a fight with another middle-aged white man and throwing hands because you didn't get a chance to go on stage and tell your fucking stupid fajita joke. Right or why fucking I don't know um why Pap's Blue Ribbon beer makes good fucking dishwasher detergent or some shit I don't know whether these fucking jokes these guys have like imagine scrapping in these places and ending up in a jail cell somewhere because of your <laughs> fucking kill Tony. And uh, as you see, things got a little bit out of hand, but uh, cooler head. Any any guy talking to me, like holding two beers in his hands and telling me I have insecurities, you're going to get a headbutt. I'm sorry. That's the first move I'll go, especially if I'm having a couple of drinks. Maybe my hands won't fly as well, but I'm definitely going to lean my fucking head into your nose for sure. Don't tell me about my insecurities, you fucking cunt. It's tried to prevail. But beers, comics, small alleyway, uh, tensions were pretty high back there. Um, I don't know about the front, front of the line if the two cops <laughs> guarding the door <laughs> even knew what was going on. At look the- at the... Look at the wannabe Duncan Trussell. Look at the wannabe Duncan Trussell guy. Look at it. Of the line, if the two cops guard the door, even knew. Look at that. Look at the wannabe Duncan Trussell. Look at him. Knew what was going on at the back of the line, but uh, it was pretty tense back there. Um, I don't know if they're going to uh, do things differently. For Grown that. men wearing bucket hats and floral shirts and wannabe emos, wannabe Duncan Trussells. Guys with unironic glasses. Oh my god! Now on, or just wait till uh, we Lord of the Flies ourselves and uh, weed ourselves out of this uh, situation, or uh, what's going to happen? But uh, yeah, it's a it's an interesting uh, situation. That how much? How many cans of liquid deaths got got drunk on that queue? How many spuds got had? How many backpacks are guys wearing there? Full of I don't know books and shit and spare iPods to listen to Joe Rogan's podcast. <laughs> I don't blame Brendan for cheating, man. I don't blame Brendan for just performing in front of T5K audience. Imagine being around these guys, man. Look, look at this guy. He even stands like Rogan. Look at this guy. He's even standing like Rogan. He's got that little stance, the kind of tattoos like, these guys are fucking redux. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look how he's standing. <laughs> uh, we found ourselves in on Monday. Look at this Asian, look at this Asian guy going crazy. Look, what is this? Who are these people? Day at a- this Asian guy's mad, bro. 
So I guess that happens quite. But if I'm not mistaken, again, I how much kill Tony in a while? Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. But I'm sure kill Tony. Tony Hinchcliffe says all the time. He warns people: if you come up, if you get if if a name gets called and you come up and it's not your name, they they x you off, innit? it? You kind of get blacklisted, don't you? Or am I mistaken? So why would you do that? It would hurt your chances, you no? Know, for the next time, you get blacklisted, don't you? It's not like a good thing. It's kind of like frowned upon in that kind of kill Tony world. I'm pretty sure they say that. So, okay, so they say, yeah, truth, let's say, okay, cool. So maybe, yeah, but can you imagine, though, waiting outside for like four plus hours to do an open mic at Kill Tony and then your name gets called, someone else takes it and then people are telling you to calm down. This fucking wannabe Joe Rogan guy is telling you to chill out. No, nah, I'm not chilling out. No wonder the Asian guy is angry. I'll be angry too. I'm not chilling out. Fuck that. Uh, kill Tony here. But at the end of the day, I walked over to the creek in the cave, had a seven gram blunt, sit in the back while South by Southwest roast battle was going on in the main room. Had a what? Seven grand blunt? What's a seven? Oh, seven gram, gram blunt. Sit in the back while South by Southwest roast battle was going on in the main room. I just enjoyed it with some cool people that. This guy looks like Mersh, doesn't it? Southwest roast battle was going on in the main room. I feel like a lot of guys that listen to podcasts look like this. This kind of mush kind of look. The receding hairline, always smoking, cigarette, a blunt, cigars, wearing like weird t-shirts. They got those calves where like it just kind of splays out. They always got really weird opinions on women and shit. Like, no, they kind of give in mush, isn't it? The kind of guys that have like cats and stuff. Um, the ones that kind of walk around with like Yeti cooler little things with their drinks inside it. Maybe it's whiskey, maybe it's coffee, who knows? But I feel like a lot of podcast guys look like this. Like that's especially in America, they kind of look like this. This is kind of their kind of de facto look. They're kind of like what they call I think is it called IRC? Is that called IRC? They're like those kind of guys who go around like that guy, um fucking um oh, what's his name? Beck Alaska. Those type of dudes are always out. They're always kind of streaming. Ice pers- they're kind of they're kind of personality guys. The guys that are always streaming. They're always carrying fucking charged battery packs for their fucking phones. They're always trying to go people into a reaction. Like that kind of personality. You know, look, he's got a weed t-shirt on. Like that's a term. <laughs> <laughs> if he's married, he's wearing one of those like CrossFit rings. You know those like silicon rings that they wear. Like if you're married, I don't know why these guys in the scene they will have this thing where they don't like wearing normal wedding rings, so they wear like a wedding ring that's like made out of rubber. It looks like something that you'd get out of fucking like, out of a fruit machine or some shit. Um, but a lot of CrossFit guys like wearing them also. Um, yeah. I just enjoyed it with some cool people that uh, weren't trying to kill each other. But uh, overall, I hope... Hold on. Is he being funny when he says that? There's no one there. Is he saying cool people to be jokey or is he not? Be, or is he being funny? What do you guys think? Is he... Because he's a comedian, I'm assuming. Is he trying to be the funny? Back while so- There's no one there, though. South by Southwest, roast battle was going on in the main room. I just enjoyed it with some cool people that... There's no one sat next to him. That, uh, weren't trying to kill each other. Those people aren't with him either. He just joined their crew. <laughs> but uh, overall, I hope uh, things get better for uh, the comics at uh, Kill Tony. Seven gram blunt has been passed around seven people. Uh, good luck to everybody. Yeah. This guy turned up in the dungarees. Like, like Everyone's got a little kooky thing about him, isn't it? He's got his little hair going on, dungarees. I wonder if this is like a regular guy just turns up there in a pair of jeans and a white t-shirt. Like Everyone's got a little like kink and uh see you next week right guys and gals fucking hell mate that was brutal Oof, the comedy scene is an interesting space bro interesting space i just pray to god i don't i, I pray to god i don't, I don't look like that because I, I know i'm laughing at these guys from afar but i'm sure other people could look at me and think you know what you're just like those guys i pray to god i'm not because that's legitimately reason to gadoosh yourself. Like I could, I would happily gadoosh myself if I look like that. Fucking hell. No, thank you, mate. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, and you. <laughs>
Oh, mate.